The Auburn Tigers drew an incredible slate for 2024. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked on Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us, Daryl Dapperish, Montgomery Radio vet. The everydayers know him. The everydayers love him, and we love you. Daryl, I also love Auburn's 2024 slate of games. I don't think it could have gone much better as the SEC Network announced Auburn's future opponents in 2024 after Texas and Oklahoma enter the conference. I agree. It's a great night. I love these reveal shows. I think it's really cool in the middle of June to have something like this to talk about and anticipate. So that in itself kind of had me booging, like you would say, and excited and and, and ready. And then when the schedule came out, I was very, very pleased. And look, you know, we talked about it before we hit record. There's some Auburn faction of a fan base that complains. I I think no matter what you do, you could give out free cruises at Jordan-Hare Stadium at every game and someone would still find something wrong with it. So you're in the SEC. You're not going to play a Pac-12 schedule. You're not going to play a Conference USA schedule. You know inherently it's going to be rough to begin with. But all that being said, I think it's the best that Auburn could have hoped for. I love the balance. I went yes. back through and kind of did that ranking thing on my own Sure, that me and you did, and it was like 8.3 or something like that. So Auburn really has a nice, balanced schedule. Um, and it, it, there are there are heavyweights on that schedule just inherently by who Auburn has to play as rivals. But I think the SEC did a good job of trying to balance that out on the back end. And that was that's surprising to some people, but I'm glad to see they did that. And, and for folks that may have missed the start of the broadcast or not watched the broadcast at all, the way they decided locations is if you went and played at a venue in 2023, this upcoming season, they were not going to send you there two years in a row. So that means, okay, if Auburn's playing Alabama and Georgia, they're not going to play them at Jordan-Hare Stadium. So those are obviously the two toughest games on Auburn's schedule. But let's look at it. Auburn's 2024 opponents at home, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and Vandy, and then they will go to Alabama, to Georgia, to Kentucky, and to Missouri. Daryl, let's park at these home games on this 2024 slate. And, of course, we don't know the dates or times or anything like that yet. But Arkansas at home, Oklahoma at home, Texas A&M at home, and Vanderbilt at home. We're a year away, but I think all four of those games extremely winnable. They really are. You know, Oklahoma, I, I kind of made the 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 proclamation last week. I had Oklahoma ranked a little bit higher, and I forgot, looking back at their year with Venables last year, they weren't the same Oklahoma that we come to know with Lincoln Riley. So no, that offense I, I actually would have changed my mind on that and would have slotted Texas above Oklahoma. And although I wanted Texas, and a lot of Auburn fans did, I'm glad from a balance standpoint and a strength schedule standpoint, that Auburn gets Oklahoma and they get them at home. That's going to be a fun game. Vandy at home because Auburn goes to Vanderbilt, you know, in 23. Sure. A- A&M at home, very, like you said, very winnable. Just like last year, it was very winnable and one of the worst Auburn football seasons. And then Arkansas, which, you know, I I love that, that home schedule. I agree. Of course, it's going to be tough on the road, but if things would have stayed the way they were supposed to be anyway, you would have seen Alabama and Georgia on the road in 2024. Yeah, that part was tough anyway, and I think the rest of your schedule gets a little bit easier with, with all of this. Uh, I'm with you. Then looking at the road part of it, like we said, at Alabama, at Georgia, those are going to be tough, likely losses. We'll see how the program develops in the next 12 months. It could be tremendous, and that'd be outstanding. But at Kentucky and at Missouri, like you knew you were going to play multiple teams, kind of that, that middle tier, and I think Missouri's in that lower tier of the SEC. And I think both of those games extremely winnable on the road, which is exactly what you want when you look at road SEC games. And you think about it. I mean, Auburn hasn't gone to Kentucky, I think, since 2016, maybe 2015 in Lexington. And then they went to Missouri, uh, Jared Sinem's first year 
which played was, on like a Thursday night, right? Yeah, two th- yeah, and, uh, Auburn, yeah, on a Thursday night in Kentucky, Sean White made started. That was an Auburn win, and then they played at Missouri in 2017, where Auburn put up like 50 something points. I mean, it was carry on. I think way. scored like four touchdowns in that. game. That was a great game. That was a coming out party. It was the third game of the year, I believe, in 2017. So yeah. it's been a while since Auburn's been to Columbia, Missouri, and to Lexington. So that's good. Um, I think, too, when you look at that home schedule, I know we're focusing on the SEC, but for fans that want to watch Auburn at home, you also get Cal at home mm-hmm. in 2024. So that's a nice little home schedule with some unique teams. Oklahoma and Cal haven't been ever been to Jordan-Hare. So you get to see two teams that have never, ever been to Jordan-Hare in that home schedule. That That's what's neat and fun and where they got this schedule right is to make it unique in something that's different and fresh. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think when you look at this schedule, Daryl, let's take Alabama and Georgia out of it because you, you're never going to go into those games kind of saying like those are going to be gimmies. But just I think every other team on this slate, and we'll we'll put Cal into here as well. I think Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas A and M, Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Kentucky. I mean, I think there's a really solid chance you win all of those games, including Cal. So, and also. It's so far out, right? I mean, this is a 2024 season. Can't stress that enough. But just the belief in what this program is doing with Coach Hugh Freeze, we're all assuming, and I don't think it's a crazy assumption, that Auburn will be a better team in 2024 than they are in 2023 as well. And so you just kind of look at the state of where these programs are. I don't think Arkansas is trending up right now. We'll see what Pittman does, but they're going to lose KJ Jefferson, right? So all of a sudden with them coming here, Vandy's Vandy, Oklahoma. And th- is it a guarantee that Venables is even going to be coaching? He probably will, but like, mm-hmm. I mean, if it's anywhere close to what it was last year, they're not going to be happy with them. And then, you know, Texas A&M, obviously it's a pivotal thing, but Texas A&M's never played well at Auburn. And then, you know, Kentucky's not trending up. Missouri's Missouri. Like, I just like the situation. I like the situation, and, and I don't really know how this could have been any better for Auburn. Yeah, there's some teams there that are like really kind of stable. Like you said, they're not trending up, maybe not trending down. They're just kind of holding court. I yeah. think of like like a, a Texas A&M, who if he doesn't get it figured out, he's Jimbo's gone. I mean, you know, Bobby right. Petrino better fix the offense. And then Missouri, will Drinkwitz be there? Kentucky, I feel like Kentucky's plateaued. I don't know where, I mean, where else is Kentucky going to go? You know, they're not going to, now that they're out of the East and they're having to play tougher games. And the other thing too, I don't mind going back and revisiting, you know, I I made the assumption that the SEC would like pair teams. Like if you go play one team, you'll play that other team. Like Auburn doesn't play either of the Mississippi schools. They play Vandy, but not Tennessee. So they kind of left it like standalones where you Mm -hmm. don't play both teams from the same state. So it's really interesting, I think, geographically, when you look at some of the other conferences, how much of a cluster they are, like UCLA in the in the Big Ten, like where, where they have to travel. They've done a good job from a geographical standpoint, too, and preserved rivalries. They did a great job with Texas having to play Oklahoma, A&M, and LSU. Right. I mean, that was a really good get by the SEC doing that. Yeah, there's a few things about this schedule I wish were a little different. And I shouldn't say schedule the slate of opponents in 2024 that I wish were a little different, Daryl. Uh, we'll touch on that, and we'll also touch on this huge recruiting weekend. Auburn's already on two commitments. They may get another commit today uh, that may be one of the bigger ones of the class. We'll discuss all this coming up on today's Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs can bring you the most comfortable pair of shorts ever as well as pants. I have a few pair of their shorts, and I absolutely love them. They've got that stretchy material. It's very cool. Uh, in the summer, if you want to jump in a pool or a lake or you know, you're playing with your kids on a water slide or you got a slip and slide or something, you want to kind of play with them for a second. I did this this past Saturday, Daryl, and, and the pants were dry like 15 minutes later. I mean, it's, it's that great, high-quality material. Um, and also, you know, you're not going to sweat as much because they're so cool, uh, but they look good. They don't look like, you know, just kind of some thin gym shorts or anything like that. They look like really nice, um, high quality khaki shorts. And so highly encourage you to head over to birddogs.com slash locked on college, go to that link and it will apply a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college. 
for that free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Daryl, my biggest issue with this, there's there's two. There's two things I wanted on this schedule. And then frankly, I'm a little surprised it didn't happen. One is it seemed like all the report and all the smoke was Texas and Auburn would be playing each other. Obviously, that didn't happen. Oklahoma coming to Jordan Hare Stadium instead of Texas. It's an easier matchup, I think, you know, as much as we can project, you know, 12 months into the future, unless, you know, unless Arch Manning just stinks. But I mean, it's impossible to predict that at this point. But while it's easier, like I, I really wanted Austin, either Auburn to go to Austin or Austin to come to Auburn. I think those fan bases are kind of similar. And I think that would have been fun. I agree. I, I, th- I thought about something with the Oklahoma fact. You know, I felt like they were going to give Auburn Texas because recency. Auburn played Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl, and it's been right. since 1991 since Auburn played Texas. But sure. here's what makes it a little bit of a sexy matchup. Remember Ooh. remember the crap that Venables spewed after he took the Oklahoma job <laughs> about <laughs> Auburn know. and its boosters and its trustees? I mean, he ran some smack uh, unsolicited. It wasn't like somebody asked him, hey, what do you – he was like, I talked to my daughter. She wanted to know why, and I just said I didn't have a good feeling about it. Not everyone's on the same page. I mean, he threw some 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 darts at Auburn, its board, and some of its boosters. And so that's going to make it really interesting when he rolls out of the, the tunnel in 2024 with his big head coming on the field at some of the stuff that will happen. So that that's kind of cool. I mean, but I agree with you. I wanted to see Texas based upon recent games, uh, and I wanted to see Arch Manning. I think that that would be cool. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy with Oklahoma because, it to me, you're right. I think it's probably, probably, of course, all speculation. Yeah, we're guessing, yeah. An easier game. And again, the Venables factor, I'd love to see him get beat down. And then people ask him on the way out back to the tunnel, what he, what's he think about the Auburn boosters now? Yep, that's right. Who's aligned now? Who's Brent? aligned now? Who, who's on the same page there, Brett V? That, yeah. that, that you know, let him hear it. Let you and an it. L. That's what's on the same page. I may be standing in the end zone. I may be that dude. Just ask. Uh, right. All right. That's cool. Okay. That's all cool. Right. Nobody's going to stop you. Yeah. Nobody's going to stop you at all. That's for sure. The other thing is I wanted LSU on the schedule. And that's something you and I discussed. We were kind of predicting what these possibly would be. I wanted them to keep the three biggest rivalries. And you didn't really see that across most teams. And most teams don't have like three real rivals like Auburn does. I think Auburn's got more tradition than most teams in the SEC because of that. But, you know, you obviously had to keep Alabama and Georgia. The conference wanted that. I thought the conference would make Auburn LSU stay on the schedule. Spoke with Caroline Finn, host of Lockdown LSU, during our live show last night. And she said a similar thing. She was bummed from the LSU side that that Auburn LSU game wasn't there. And also, the other side of the coin is once the SEC kind of made the announcement that, okay, where you play is going to be, you know, the opposite of where you did a year ago. You're not going to go to the same place twice. It would have been Auburn's turn to host. And so obviously that would have been that would have been a great environment in Jordan Hare Stadium. So a little bummed about that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, my two teams are different than yours because they were different as far as predictions. Florida I wanted Florida. I wanted Florida on the schedule. It's been a while since all, mm-hmm. Florida has been in Jordan Hare a right. very long time. Urban Meyer was relevant the last time that happened. And then I think the Ole Miss thing. Look, I it really bothers me that I think the SEC missed the mark here and missed a great opportunity with a burgeoning, growing rivalry that's starting to grow because of Hugh Freeze and because of Lane Kiffin. Not the tradition between the two schools, not the pecking order between the two schools, and not the stat- the status of the two schools, but the two men leading the programs – there's, you know, there, there's a there's a natural born little rift rivalry happened, and the SEC missed out on a huge opportunity to have you Freeze go back to Oxford next year, and that's what it would have been is you Freeze back in Oxford, and for some reason they're not allowing that to happen right away, and I think that's a missed opportunity. Well, I just think when you look at Ole Miss, you know, they obviously don't play Auburn, like you said. And they don't play Alabama either, which is a similar thing, right? With Lane Kiffin coming from Alabama. What a great cooked in storyline that is as well. And I'm going to take it a step further, Daryl, and say, I just think the SEC doesn't care about Ole Miss. They don't think that they're relevant enough to have like, okay, you can play LSU and you can play Mississippi State. That's fine. That's cool. But like, 
everything else, like I just think Ole Miss is kind of a placeholder in the conference. I mean, they're not going to win anything. And Ole Miss has got a pretty favorable schedule. I think a lot of them are very excited about it, but like, it doesn't matter. They're Ole Miss. Like, I, I, I just, that, that's what I took from it. As soon as smoke started coming out of the SEC office, that Ole Miss probably wasn't going to play Auburn or Alabama, despite those storylines, Daryl, I'm like, okay, all right, the SEC is just tipping its hand. Like, it's we like they don't they don't think Ole Miss can be built into these special rivalries outside of the Egg Bowl. That's that's what I took from it. But that's what I took from it was the minute that Ole Miss didn't get on that schedule, I would have bet the house that LSU would have been then. You know what I'm saying? That the fact sure. that Ole Miss wasn't on that schedule, then I would have thought LSU instead of maybe AM. Mm-hmm. Now maybe they think LSU is a tougher opponent than a and m and to keep Auburn's schedule balanced with playing Georgia and Alabama, they gave them AM instead of LSU because of you know equity. I get that, but LSU is much more of a rival than AM is. And so if you're going to get Ole Miss, which is a growing rivalry, I get it, the irrelevancy of it. Why not LSU or why not Florida, which, as you mentioned, used to be. Now, remember, Auburn didn't play LSU every year until 1991. Sure. Uh, in the 80s, they didn't. They would go two or three years without playing, and that's kind of weird. But, but let's be strange. clear here, though, because I said that a few a – few, uh, I said that when we discussed you know, our predictions, and I got a few comments. Oh, by always play, you mean 1991? I'm like, yeah, that was, that's been 30 years. Right. Like that's that's an older rivalry than I am. I'm not 30, so like I I just. But to see to see Florida was a much bigger rival to Auburn before '91 than LSU was, and they flip flopped. But like, Auburn's, who cares? Uh, Auburn who, stopped playing who Florida. Cares about you know, what happened but, over more than 30 years well, ago, Daryl? Because I get, but that's but that's the definition of tradition. You, you have to care if you want historic rivalries and tradition. Tradition is defined by what happened over 20 or 30 years ago. It's not just what happened in the last five stops. or 10 years. But if it stops, though, I think the current 30-year okay. streak is more important. But why not renew it? it, it just because it stopped doesn't mean you can't rekindle it. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I tradition is based upon history. and I'm just saying that I would have liked to have seen, like Florida used to play Auburn every year, and then it stopped when they went into divisions, and LSU right. became that guy. That When, when Tennessee used to play Florida – Auburn used to play LSU, it seemed like, on that same weekend. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a cool little thing that was going on. So sure. Florida, let Florida jump back on there then. I, I don't know. But you're not going to get that anymore. You No matter what we want, it's, it, gone. You can't yeah. do, it's, you, it's gone. You can't right. do it with 16 teams in Texas and Oklahoma. So I could sit here and be that dude that reminisces about the good old days, but it's not going to matter. Yeah, I mean, and we'll see what happens because it seems unavoidable. They're going to go to this 3-6 model once all the TV deals are worked out. And then, you know, who's going to be Auburn's third team after Alabama and Georgia? Like, that will be interesting. Is it LSU? Is it Florida? Or is it a Vandy or a Missouri? Some lower-tier SEC team that um, that kind of helps even things out. I don't know. I genuinely don't know the answer to that. So that'll be fun to see as we get closer and closer to that. Daryl, huge recruiting week already. And later today could be even bigger. We discuss what all has happened recruiting on the planes in just a moment right here on Locked On Auburn. want to encourage you to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Great way to talk with a bunch of Auburn fans as well as have access to all the folks that come on the show like myself, like Daryl. We're in there all the time. And if you tag us, we'll answer pretty quickly because um, we love you. Right. I we love, love seeing our- I, I love seeing the little red notification. I got to tell right. you something, something that's about right. seeing a little red circle knowing you got a little message there that I just oh, yeah. on. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, we love our everyday or so get involved in the Locked Auburn Discord. Okay, so Auburn has already picked up two really, really exciting commits for different reasons. We'll start there, then we'll talk about what could happen later today. Bryce Kane, we'll go in chronological order. Bryce Kane, who I think is one of the more exciting guys in this class already um, because his upside is ridiculous. He will rise in the rankings. He is currently a three-star. It is pretty much unanimously discussed that he will end the class as a four-star when they reclassify. So, um, But a very explosive wide receiver. He is from Baker down in South Alabama, second largest high school in the state. And Daryl, this kid is just explosive. Game-changing speed, but also possesses a knack to just get behind defenders, which is very, very exciting. It's not just a speed thing. It's a feel-of-the-game thing. And I just think this kid's got a lot of really, really good traits that are going to translate to the next level. 
Couple things. First of all, from a from a bird's eye view, people that panic over getting kids that are three stars and making comments about three star you and all that, put that away for two reasons. Number one, what Zach just said, this kid will be a four star before it's all said and done. He's a riser. He's going to end up being one of the best wide receivers in the state, period. Number two, I don't care if he stayed a three star. This coaching staff, I trust, unlike the other coaching staff that went after three stars. If you freeze, loves him and wants him in the receiving room, I'm all sold. But I think that that's irrelevant. He's going to be a four star. Look, it's hard to, to look at certain things without looking at game film. But I did watch some game film. I also watched some camp film. And one thing that is evident that you can't hide, you can't mask, is how he runs routes. We talked about his speed. Walker White was dropping dimes to him. And the reason why he was is because he was getting behind defensive backs because he's such an elite route runner. Mm -hmm. Very crisp, very uh, concise when he runs his routes, and he's got great hands. That's going to be a combination for years to come that a lot of people are going to like the chemistry between White and Kane. So I love this kid. I think he's going to be, again, one of the best receivers in the receiving room before it's said and done at Auburn. And uh, speed to burn. But when you combine his speed – with his route running ability, it's very, very excellent as far as a get for Auburn. I'm excited. It's a, it's a really good wide receiver get for Hugh Freeze and company. Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. And so we'll see how his ranking goes up. But like you said, I don't care if it does or not. I think the kid deserves it. But even if it doesn't, he's going to have a good good chance to make a difference here at Auburn. And Marcus Davis seems to like him a lot. And Marcus Davis has hit the ground running. Let's be very clear as a wide receivers coach. So that's, that's very, very exciting stuff. The next guy uh, committed publicly a few hours later, Kinsley Fauston. He is a safety. He is from the state of Florida. And Daryl, we were talking about him a moment ago, but just elite speed on the other side of the ball and a knack for just getting to where the football is. 5'10", 170 from Naples, Florida, has already been said that right now him and Bryce Kane are the two fastest guys in the Auburn class. How great is that that they committed within an hour and a half of each other? Yeah. Here's the thing about Faustin. Number one, he's a safety. Now, it looks like he's a little undersized for a safety, so tackling at the line of scrimmage could be something eventually that could be an, uh, an issue. But okay. you know, we know that he's going to put size on at Auburn. He's 170. He'll probably end up playing at 185, 190. Sure. But he has elite speed, and there's a – you know, it's a funny about football. Every five or six years, different terms come up, different catchphrases that people will throw out, scouts, evaluators. And when they talk about him, they talk about him being an elite chaser. Mm. Now, what does that mean? Well, chaser, when you're playing safety, and he's going to play field safety or free safety, not strong safety, because that gives you the most flexibility to roam, boundary to boundary. When you're an elite chaser, it means two things. Number one, you're able to get to the receiver and cover crossing routes. As you know, crossing routes are the hardest to pick up, to identify, and to get to the receiver with all that traffic because naturally when you're crossing, it creates that natural pick, that kind of thing. It's hard to get through the traffic and cover and chase crossing routes. They said he is elite at that because of his speed. That is a very, very sought-after factor in a defensive back in any level, at corner or safety, yeah. that can go cover the crossing route. So that's number one. That's difficult. Number two, sure. he's good at chasing the deep ball, meaning if your corner gets beat one-on-one -on -one and out and up, a pump and go, he is able to track that down from his position on the field, cover all that ground, and chase down the receiver that has your corner beat on the deep ball. Those two attributes and those qualities in a defensive back are what puts guys in the league. If you can cover crossing routes and jump that and fight through traffic because you're so fast, and if you can track the deep ball and cover for a corner that got beat, you are elite. Get 10 or 15 pounds on this kid so that he can become a tackler at the line of scrimmage, and you're going to have a special, special safety. I'm with you. I think you nailed that evaluation. I think he's going to be a fun, fun part of this class. And, you know, we, we talk about guys, athletes that come out of Florida. It's always mm. can't have enough of those. So uh, this could be an even better week on the recruiting front, depending on how it goes today. So at noon, Joseph Phillips, 
He's from Tuskegee, right down the road from Auburn. And he seemed like an Auburn lock for forever. But over the last few weeks, he's really trended hard towards Georgia. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like Auburn was the main school on him early. And then everybody else got involved, went to Alabama, went to Georgia. And he's been really, really tied to Georgia. But as of Thursday night, you're seeing more and more predictions, more and more crystal balls going towards Auburn, which is very, very exciting. So uh, it also is kind of interesting. You know, he puts out his announcement. He's like, hey, I'm recru- uh, I'm going to commit Thursday at, at noon. And then Hugh Freeze pops the the eyes emoji right after that. That was telling. Yeah. I, th- well, I always look at um, stars are great. The level of competition you play against are great. But I look at offer lists. Who yes. wants you and wants you bad? Yeah. Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas A&M want this kid bad. And if Auburn gets him and beats them head to head on the trail, that's the kind of battles you need to win to compete for championships. Mm-hmm. Quite honestly, that's it. You go ahead. You got to go head to head with the big boys. Auburn's flipped a couple from Alabama, or and has won a couple battles with guys going head to head with Alabama. This is t- you, you start beating Kirby head to head on a player. You've announced your intentions. That's right. That's right. I mean, that, that'd be huge. And if that happens, we will go right. live. We will go live. Yes, we will. Uh, and that'll be fun. So come celebrate with us if that happens. So we'll see. Um, Daryl, good stuff as always. How can people check out everything you've got going on? Follow me on Twitter. I love interacting. DAP6410, Monday mornings at 710 WANI, Auburn Opelika this morning. Uh, and obviously in the Discord, like uh, Zach said, love talking to our, our listeners and viewers in the Discord. Absolutely. You can follow me on socials at Z Blackerby. Uh, if you missed it, be sure to check out our exclusive interview with Auburn quarterback Peyton Thorne yesterday. And we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked On Auburn.